I invite our speaker today mchungaji sifa pastor sifa hebu tusimame tunapompokea let us stand to our feet as we receive pastor sifa makofi kwa yesu jamani put your hands together for Hallelujah. jesus haleluya ha tunapokuwa bado tumesimama while we are still standing tuimbe nyimbo inasema wa kuabudiwa na wa kutukuzwa ni yesu can we sing that song that says you are the one that, that deserves to be worshiped and he can see us amen he's watching over us let us sit in his presence unafuraya bwana do you have the joy of the lord unafuraya bwana do you have the joy of the lord furaha bwana ndio nguvu yetu because the joy of the lord is our mahali hapa ni kwa ajili ya bwana we are in this place is just for the lord kama uko mahali hapa kwa ajili ya jambo I don't know if you are in this place for a different reason. Lakini mimi niko mahali hapa kwa ajili ya Bwana. As for me I am here just for the sake of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Haingekuwa yeye singekuwa mahali hapa. If it was not for the Lord then I would not be in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hakika namshukuru kwanza Mungu. First I want to appreciate God kuniwezesha kuwa mahali hapa to uh, enable me to be in this place na kusimama mahali hapa and to stand in this pulpit nashukuru tena apostle tris uh, i also want to thank the apostle of the house kwa ukubali kuwa nisimame mahali hapa to accept or allow me to be in this place haleluya amen maana tuko mahali hapa ni kwa neema wote because we are just here by his grace haleluya amen haleluya amen basi tutaingia katika neno la Mungu so now we are going to share the word of god na naamini ya kwamba and i want to believe that maana neno la Mungu because the word of god ni pumzi ya Mungu mwenyewe is like his breath na anapoleta neno and when he brings forth a word ni kwa ajili ya kutufundisha it is for teaching us ni kwa ajili ya kutuelekeza it is for instructing ni kwa ajili ya kutukemea it is maybe even for telling us where we have gone wrong ni kwa ajili ya kututia moyo and maybe even for encouraging us maana yeye ni mzazi because he is a parent hallelujah amen mungu wetu ni mzazi our father or our god is a parent ana roho ya kuwa mzazi he has that heart to be a parent kabla ha haujazaliwa katika mwili wa damu na nyama before you were born in the physical alikujua he already knew you alikufahamu he already knew kabla you. wazazi hawajakuona hata kwa macho even before your parents saw you physically yeye anajua mwanzo wako na mpaka mwisho he already knew your beginning and your end jamani huyo Mungu ni mzuri sana he is a good god kwa maana yeye ni mzazi because he is a parent. Kwa hiyo anaweza katukemea. He can rebuke us. Hallelujah. Amen. Katika upendo, just in love. Anaweza katuelekeza. He can also direct us Katika or upendo, us. just in love. Kila kitu anachokifanya, whatever he does, ni katika upendo. It's just out of love. Maana yeye ni upendo because he is love. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeye ni upendo. He is love. Kabla sijaendelea before I go ahead wapendwa mmependeza sana let me tell you you guys are looking good haleluya hebu tumshangilie bwana yesu kwa makofi they are saying you are also looking very good maana 
yeye ndiye anatupa uwezo huo because he's the one that enables us to look good kama sio yeye hatuwezi lolote if it is not for him then we can do nothing hallelujah amen alafu nimeona tena furaha bwana nyumbani yani furaha ya kimungu ndani ya ili kanisa ya jamaa. I can even see the joy of the Lord in the in this church. This is just an amazing thing. Yaani wakati tunasifu na na kuabudu. As we were worshiping and praising God. Nikaona kweli kama vile mama alisema kwamba tumekuwa. Yaani sasa limekuwa. I I I so I experienced that thing that mama always said that now we are matured, we have grown. Nikasema kweli tumekuwa. It is true we have matured. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maana furaha ya Bwana iko ndani yetu. Because the joy of the Lord is in us. Yaani tuna tunamsifu Bwana kwaya Mungu awabariki sana. Kingdom kwaya God bless you. Yaani Mungu akubariki sana. God bless you. Wote yani niliona furaha bwana ya ajabu because kama nikatika roho la joy of the lord maybe i saw it in the spirit but i saw the joy of the lord among us na hiyo ndio jambo linamfurahisha mungu and that is what that makes god be glad kwao nilikuwa nasema kwamba neno la mungu linapokuja linatoka katika moyo wa mzazi so i said that the word of god when it comes to us it's coming from a heart of a parent kwa hiyo inakuja katika njia ya kutuinua ya kututia nguvu. It could come in a way to encourage us, to empower us, to rebuke us. Kwa hiyo nilipokuwa naandaa neno hili. So while I was preparing this particular word, nikajisikia kwamba hakika Mungu ana 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 neno kwa ajili yetu. I felt in my spirit that for sure God has a word for us. Na sio kwamba ni neno jipya ni neno tuna tunalisoma mara kwa mara it's not something that is a new word no it's a word that we we are familiar with lakini maana natufahama natujua but because he knows us kama mzazi as a parent anatuamsha tena it's like he's making us awake again anatuamsha tena he's awakening us again anatuamsha tena he's awakening us again na neno la leo and our word today tutasoma katika wa efeso 5 we are going to read from the book of ephesians chapter 5 tusome katika jina la yesu ephesians chapter 5 tutasoma wa efeso sura ile ya 5 ephesians chapter 5 Wa Efeso 5:14 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 The Bible says Wherefore he saith Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light In Kiswahili it says Hivyo husema Amka wewe usinziae ufufuke katika wafu na Kristo atakuangaza Bwana asifiwe sana Praise the Lord kichwa cha ujumbe nasema amka amka wewe ni mlinzi the, our team today says awake for you are a watchman wewe ni mlinzi awake for you are a watchman Mimi you are a watchman i am a watchman sisi ni walinzi katika ulimwengu wa roho we are watchmen in the spirit sio katika ulimwengu huu not in this physical world lakini yale yaliyo katika ulimwengu wa roho but whatever is in the spiritual ndio yanatokileta matokeo katika ulimwengu wa mwili wa kawaida brings the results that we see physically kama Mungu anasema sisi ni walinzi so if god is saying that we are watchmen ni hakika tunakuwa macho katika roho it is true that in the spirit you are awakened na katika mwili pia and also in the physical haleluya amen haleluya amen Tunakuwa walinzi katika familia zetu. We are watchmen in our families. Tunakuwa walinzi ndani ya kanisa. We watch over in the church. Tunakuwa walinzi katika mji. We watch over in the city. Tunakuwa walinzi katika taifa. We watch over even in the nation. Tunakuwa walinzi kwa mataifa and we even watch over the nations hallelujah amen wewe ni waajabu sana for you are an amazing sio person sio jambo ndogo it's not a small thing mungu aone ya kwamba that god should see that anakuamini kiasi hicho that he can trust you to that extent na kuona ya kwamba mnaweza mkafanya kazi pamoja and to see that you can be a, you can work with him hallelujah amen neno linasema the word says hivyo kusema amka amka usinziae ufufuke katika wafu 
na Kristo ataangaza atakuangaza wherefore he said awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall be the light, the, the light. kitabu hiki cha waefeso Uh, this book of Ephesians Ni barua yenye Paulo aliandika akiwa gerezani a letter that Paul wrote while he was in prison Na kaipatia mfuasi wake apelekee kanisa la Efeso And he gave to his follower to go and submit it to the Ephesian church Ni ni alikuwa ameandikia barua sio kuwakatisha tamaa It was not a letter that would discourage them Lakini aliandika kama mzazi But he wrote as a parent Maana alifahamu because he knew Alikuwa hayupo pale physical au hayuko pala lakini kiroho alikuwa katika makanisa yale yote aliyoanzisha amesimamia kama mzazi uh, physically kimwili he was not with this people but as a parent in the spirit he was with each and every church na hakutaka waweze kusahau kujua kwamba wajue kwamba katika dunia hii wasisinzie wasijisahau so he was reminding them so that they may know that while living in this earth they should not be asleep kwa hiyo ilikuwa ni barua ya kuatia moyo so it was a letter to encourage them ilikuwa ni kuatia moyo it was a letter to encourage them ilikuwa ni kuatia moyo it was one to encourage them na kuatia nguvu and to strengthen them na sisi tunaposikia ujumbe wa leo and when we hear this word today tusijiulize mbona tuko hapa tuko macho we should not ask ourselves how come we are awake mbona pastor anaongea kuhusu usingizi why is pastor talking about us being asleep maneno ya mungu mahali hapa kwenye biblia tangu mwanzo hadi mwisho ni mambo ya kiroho because when we talk about the word of god from beginning to the end it's more of a spiritual tunaishi thing. katika maeneo mawili katika ulimwengu huu we are living in two realms in this tunaishi world tunaishi kiroho tunaishi kimwili we are living in the spiritual realm and even in the physical realm haleluya amen haleluya amen kanisa likuwa natuatia moyo kuwaeleza kwamba mjue kwamba mkae macho church i want to encourage you that you should be awake Musisi, musijisahau let's not just live this anyhowly musijisahau mkasema kwamba tumeokoka basi ni mwisho let us not think that because we are born again then, then that's it musitosheke we should not be just be content musilale musilale muwe macho we should not sleep but be awake hebu tusome tena katika ma katika matayo Let us also read from the book of Matthew. Tunapoendelea katika neno hilo Mathayo 25. As we continue with our word, let us read from the book of Matthew 25. 25. We are going to read from Matthew 25. Mstari wa from verse 1 to verse 10. I will read. Verse 1 says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom ndipo ufame wa Mungu utakapofanana na wanawali kumi walio twata zao wakatoka kwenda kumlaki bwana arusi verse 2 and five of them were wise and five of them foolish watano wao walikuwa wapumbavu na watano wao walikuwa wenye busara they that, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them wale waliokuwa wapumbavu walizitoa taa zao wasitoe na mafuta pamoja nao but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps bali wale wenye busara walitoa mafuta katika vyombo vyao pamoja na taa zao while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept hata bwana arusi alipokawia wote wakasinzia wakalala usingizi and at midnight there was a cry made was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh going out to meet him lakini usiku wa manane pakawa na kelele haya bwana arusi tokeni mwende mkamlaki then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps mara wakaondoka wanawali wale wote wakazitengeneza taa zao and the foolish said unto the wise give us your oil for our lamps are gone wale wapumbavu wakawaambia wenye busara tupeni mafuta yenu kidogo maana taa zetu zimezimika but the wise answered saying no not so 
lest there be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Lakini wale wenye busara wakawajibu wakisema, sivyo, ihayata tutosha sisi na nyinyi. Afadhali shikeni njia mwende kwa wauzao mkajinunulie. And while, we, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready in went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Na hao walipokuwa wakienda kununua bwana harusi akaja. Nao waliokuwa tayari wakaingia pamoja naye harusini na mlango ukafungwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tunaona hawa wanawali kumi. We see that this uh, uh, wise uh, bridegrooms wote walikuwa wamesinzia. They were all asleep. Sio kwamba wale watano walisinzia wengine wakabaki kuwa macho. It's not that five of them were asleep and the rest were, were, were awake. No, no, no. Wote walisinzia. But they were all asleep. Usinzia ukisinzia wa kawaida. It was just a normal sleep. Lakini nawaambia kwamba usingisi usio wa kawaida ni usingisi wa kiroho. But I want to tell you that this particular kind of sleep was not an ordinary kind of sleep. Maana ingekuwa kama ni ya, ni, ya, ni ya kawaida, yani wote hawangeweza kwenda. Because if it was an ordinary sleep, it means that no, all of them would not be able to go in. Lakini ilikuwa ni usingisi wa kiroho. Because but this was that kind of sleep that was spiritual. Ni kusema kwamba wale waliokuwa werevu wale waliokuwa werevu to say that those wise virgins hata kama walikuwa melala yani kati, wako katika mwili even if in the physical in their bodies they were asleep lakini katika roho but in their spirits walikuwa macho they were awake katika roho in the spirit walikuwa macho they were awake katika roho in the spirit walikuwa naomba they were praying katika roho in the spirit walikuwa na nena kwa lugha they were speaking katika in tongues katika roho in the spirit mafuta yalikuwa na mimimika juu yao there was still oil that was pouring upon Mana them maana kulikuwa ile tiririko ile muunganiko ya wao na Mungu because there was that flow between them and God Bwana sifiwe sana Praise the Lord Mahali pote unapokuwa anywhere you will be Unaweza kuwa kiroho it could be that in the spirit you could be in the spirit Kuna watu wanasema nina kazi nyingi Some people say that it's too much of work Sipate muda wa kuja kanisani kawaida Maybe Sipate muda wa kuja kanisani kama watu wengine. I do, I do not wengine. get time to come to church as other people. Lakini nakwambia siku ya leo. I want to tell you today. Ya kwamba mambo haya ni ya kiroho. That this thing as spiritual. Ni vizuri kweli kukutana pamoja. It is good for us to gather. Lakini mahali unapokuwa pote. But whatever place you will be. Unaweza ukaendelea kuwa mwombaji. You can continue to pray. Unaweza kuendelea kuomba ukiwa unafanya kazi. You can continue you can continue to pray even while you are working. Unaweza kusimama kama mlinzi wa kanisa mahali upo you can still be a watch over the church while you are away from the church tunachoomba ni kwamba tuwe tuwe macho what i'm saying is that we should be awake na biblia inasema kwamba and the bible says tukeshe that we should remain awake ya kwamba tukeshe that we should remain awake maana hatujui wakati wala saa for we do not know the time Hatujue muda, hatujue saa. We do not know the time neither the season. Atakapokuja mwana wa Mungu. When the son of man will come. Nana najua hiyo muda, nana najua wakati. Who knows that time? Tumetiwa moyo kwamba tukeshe. We have been encouraged to remain awake. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tutoke katika usingisi wa kiroho. Let us go out of our slumber, spiritual slumber. Tunaweza tukaonekana mahali hapa. It could be that we are seen in this place. Lakini bado Mungu anaona kwamba tunahitaji kuamka but God sees that we still need to awake haleluya amen haleluya amen mlango ukafungwa and the door was closed mlango ukafungwa the door was closed wale wenye walikuwa ni wajinga those foolish virgins wamekaa tu wanaona kama ni kawaida they were just living just an ordinary life walipoenda sasa kutafuta mafuta kuja kwenye taa but ta. when, to, when they went to buy the oil from the sellers mlango ukafungwa the door was closed hawakuweza tena kuingia they could not come in anymore ulishawahi kusikia mtu anasema kwamba have you ever heard someone say yani nitatubu tu that i will just repent nitaokoka tu i will just be born again nitafanya hivyo tu i will just do this and that 
Asijue kwamba muda ni wa Bwana. Not knowing that time belongs to God. Wakati tumepewa, wakati tumepewa ni sasa. The time that we have been given is now. Wakati ni sasa. Time is now. Tusiangalie kesho. We should not like focus on tomorrow. Kesho ni ya Bwana. Because tomorrow belongs to the Lord. Kesho si ya kwako ni ya Bwana. Tomorrow belongs to the Lord and not yours. Hakuna anayeweza kujua kitakachotokea baadaye ni nini. No one knows what will happen later. Tunajua ya sasa. We know what is happening now. Kwa hiyo tunapokuwa katika sasa. So when we are in this now, tukeshe. May we be awake. Tukeshe. Let us be awake. Tukeshe. Let us be awake. Na mimi nikeshe. And even me, let me be awake. Tuwe walinzi tulio macho. So that we can be watchmen that are on guard and awake. Ulishawahi kuona mlinzi? Have you ever seen a watchman? Ana silaha that he has an ana kila kitu he has everything lakini akilala usingisi but when they sleep adui yake anakuja the enemy comes anachukua ile silaha takes the armor anaenda nayo and goes with it au hata anampiga nayo and even maybe shoot him with that same armor kwa hiyo tunaona paulo akiambia waefeso so we see paul speaking to the ephesians ya kwamba muwe macho that be awake muwe macho be awake muwe macho be awake kwa nini aliwaambia hivyo why did he tell him alitaka wawe na nguvu alitaka wawe na nguvu because he wanted them to have this power Ma- maana alijua kama katika ufalme huu for he knew that in this kingdom tuna adui that we have an enemy na kwamba tuna adui and because we have an enemy na adui yetu ana hasira sana and this enemy is very angry hebu tusome katika kwanza tutasoma samuel wa kwanza let us read from the book of first samuel samuel wa kwanza sura ya ile ya 4 tano hadi tano chapter 4 in Adikano we are going to read verse 4 to 5 first samuel chapter 8 first samuel chapter 8 verse 4 to 5 first samuel chapter 8 verse 4 to 5 the bible says then all the elders of israel gathered together uh, gathered themselves together and came to samuel and to rama and said unto him behold thou art old and thy sons walk not in thy ways now make us a king to judge us like all nations bwana sifiwe sana amen in kiswahili it says ndipo waze wote wa israeli wakakutana pamoja wakamwendea samueli huko rama wakamwambia angalia wewe umekuwa mzee nao wanao wae, hawaenendi katika njia zako basi tufanyie mfame atuamue mfano wa mataifa mengine mpango wa Mungu juu ya Israel uh, the plan of god over israel ni ili yeye awe ndiye kiongozi it was for him to be their king yeye ndiye aweze kusimama kama mfalme kwao for him to be in the place of a king aweze kutawala maisha yao and to to control over their lives atawale taifa lao and control over their awaongoze katika haki na kweli and guide them through righteousness and truth na israel wa kironi mimi na wewe and uh, the israel of today is you and i ni kusema yale matakwa yale mpango Mungu alionao juu ya Israeli mpango alionao juu ya maisha yako na maisha yako meaning that the will of god that he had upon israel is likewise even with us today in our lives lakini kafika mahali but it came to a point wana wa israel wakasema the children of israel said kwamba tunataka tufanane na wengine we said we want to be like the other nations na sisi tuwe na mfalme kama wengine we also wengine. want to have a king like the rest of the nations wakasema tunataka tuwe na mfalme they said we also want to have a king over us samuel kamuumiza and samuel was very hurt lakini mungu akasema wasikilize tu but god said just listen to them mimi na wewe you and i mungu hataki tufanane na watu wengine god does not want us to look like the rest kama vile hakutaka wana wa israeli wawe wafanane na wengine just like the way he didn't want the israelites to look na like the other nations ndivyo hivyo hataki tufanane na wengine likewise he, did, he doesn't want us to look like others mimi na wewe ni tofauti because we are different ni tofauti we are different ni tofauti na dunia hii we are different from this world 
Maana mfalme wetu because our king ni bwana wa mabwana is the lord of lords ni mfalme wa falme he is the king of kings nguvu zote he has all the Mwenye power he has all the ability ametuuma kwa sura yake na mfano wake for he has created us in his image and likeness he ajivune kwa ajili yako na kwa ajili yangu he wants to boast over our lives for you and for akiwa me. mbinguni akiangalia hapa duniani anasema hey kuna mwanangu hapo he when he is in heaven he looks down on earth and says hey i have a son here Aone kwamba hakika tunapotembea tuna tofauti na wengine. He wants to see us walk differently from others. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Huu ni mfalme mzuri. This is a he Huu ni mfalme mwema. He is a good king. Tukubali ya kwamba tutawale. Let us allow him to rule over us. Tukubali ya kwamba tuongoze. Let us allow him to guide us. Tukubali ya kwamba tuelekeze. To let us allow him to instruct us. Lakini mara kwa mara tumekuwa na shingo ngumu. But most of the time our necks have been very tuna hard. Tunaambiwa tunakuwa kama tumesikia leo lakini baadaye hatuonekani tena. We here but we, we seem as if we have had but later it's like we never had anything. Tusiwe kama watu wengine. Let us not be like the other Wana wa Israeli wakasema tufanane na wengine hamna shida. And the children of Israel said no, we just want to be like the other nations. There's no problem. Ni kama kusema tumechoka kila wakati tuombe ili tumsikilize Mungu. It is like it is in other words to say that we are tired of praying every time we have to pray before things happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lakini But Samuel akasema Samuel said. Yaani nyinyi mnachokitaka ni mateso. Whatever you want is just suffering. Huyu mfalme mnaye mtaka sio kwamba atawatawala kwa uzuri. This king that you are sorting is not just a king who is going to Ata rule over you as God. Mawenu. You are going to be his slaves. Atawatumikisha kwa nguvu. He is going to make you slaves. Maana ndani yake hamna upendo. Because in him there is no love. Wakati mwingine sometimes Yaani Tunataka tufanane na wengine. We want to look just like the others. We Lakini want to be sio familiar. mpango wa Mungu. But that's not the will of sio God. Sio mpango wa Mungu. It is not the will of Hata God. Hata wana wa Zion tuwe tofauti. Even we as children of Zion, let us be different. Maana neno Mungu alitupa ni tofauti na Because wengine. Because whatever God the mandate that God gave us is different from others. Mungu amesema tumtafute kwa bidii. God said that we should seek him diligently. Tusiseme hapo kama mbona wengine hawakeshi kama vile tunavyokesha. We shouldn't say that how come others are not having overnights like us. Mbona wengine hawafungi kama tunavyofunga. How come others are not fasting as we are fasting. Sisi ni tofauti. We are different. Hallelujah. Amen. Tusome katika wa katika Warumi 12 sura ya pili. Let us read from the book of Romans 12 we are going to read verse 2. Romans Warumi 12 12 na mstari ule wa pili we are going to read from verse 2 the bible says and be not conformed to this world but ye be, tra- be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that he may prove what is that good and accepted and perfect will of god wala msifuatishe namna ya dunia hii bali mgeuzwe kwa kufanywa upya ni zenu mpate kujua hakika mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo mema ya kumpendeza na makamilifu Bwana asifiwe sana Praise the Lord Bwana asifiwe sana Praise the Lord Umeona mpango wa Mungu katika maisha yako You see the plan of God in our life Na mpango wa Mungu katika maisha yangu And the, the will of God in my life Ni kujua kwamba tumefanywa upya is to know that we have been renewed we have been made afresh tumekuwa taifa mpya we are a new a new nation tangu tumekubali kristo kuwa bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yetu since we allowed christ to be the savior of our lives maisha yale tuliyopokea kutoka kwa kristo this new life that we received from christ ni maisha ya kutangaza fadhili za Bwana. It is a life that we can announce the mercies of God. Ni maisha ya kutangaza ufalme wa Mungu. It is a life that we can announce the kingdom of God. Si ya kufurahia kwamba na sisi tumevaa kama wengine. It is not just a matter of us getting happy that we are just uh, wearing or putting on clothes just like others. Ni kuleta tofauti but it is to bring a change. Nikuleta tofauti. It is to bring a change, a difference. Hebu tusome katika Petro wa kwanza. Can we go to the book of 1 Peter? Sura ya pili na mstari wa 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Na mstari wa 9. Verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 the Bible says, but ye 
are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Bali nini ni mzao mteule, ukohani wa kifalme, taifa takatifu, watu wa milki ya mungu, mpate kuzing na kuzitangaza fadhili zake yeye aliyewaita mtoke gizani mkaingie katika nuru yake ya ajabu bwana asifiwe sana praise the lord bwana asifiwe sana praise the lord wewe na mimi ni taifa teule you and i are a chosen generation tume wito wetu ni wito mtakatifu we have been called into a holy calling bwana asifiwe amen Tumeitwa ili tusimame kuwa kama mawakala wa Bwana. We have been called as agents of the Lord. Katika ulimwengu huu in this world. Ni jambo gani lalo tufanya kwamba tuweze kusinzia? What is that that makes us to slumber? Ni kujifananisha na watu wengine. It is for us to familiarize ourselves with others. Ni kutojali ile mpango ya Mungu iliyotuleta hapa duniani. Not being careful with the plan of God that brought us into this world. Ndio natufanya kwamba tuwepo lakini usingisiwepo pia. It is like we are existing but we are in slumber. Unaweza kuwa mahali hapa you could be in this place. Ah lakini ukajua mipango inaendelea kanisani usijali. But you know what is going on in church and it's not it's none of your business. Usijali. It's none of your kwamba ni kawaida. You just find it just an ordinary thing. Wapendwa sisi tumeitwa. We've been called. Tumeitwa. We've been called. Sio kwamba tumekaa hapa tu hivyo hivyo. We are not just here by mistake. Yaani ninasikia furaha kwamba nimeitwa na Bwana. I feel joy that I've been called of the Lord. Naamini kwamba naona furaha kwamba umeitwa na Bwana. And I also know that you are happy that you have been called by the Lord. Maana ingekuwa ni mwanadamu amekuita anaweza kabadilisha mawazo. Because if it is a human being who called you they can always change their mind. Akasema huyu hafai. And they would say that maybe you are not any more akasema huyu atakiwe you are not needed anymore lakini maana ni bwana amekuita but because it's the lord who called you anakutia moyo tena siku ya leo he is encouraging you once again today anasema anka wewe ulalae usisikie anasema ni wakati wa kuamka so it is time for us to wake up anasema ni wakati wa kutembea mahali popote for us to go all over kama vile yesu alitembea kila mji na kila kijiji just like the way jesus went to different villages and towns ni wakati na sisi twende kwa majirani zetu it is time for us to wake up and go to visit our neighbors twende kwa watu wa karibu na wambali the people who are near and those who are far tuwatangazie habari njema and announce to them the good news habari za ufalme wa mungu the good news of the kingdom of god hallelujah amen hallelujah amen ukiweza kutembelea jirani yako if you can visit your neighbor ukiwa ananiya ya kwamba nina, ninaenda kwa ajili ya Bwana knowing well that I'm just going there for the Lord's sake Yesu Kristo atatembea na wewe Then Jesus Christ will walk with Yesu you Yesu Kristo ataenda na wewe Jesus Christ will go with you Kama ukikuta mahali hakuna amani basi utafanyika kwa amani katika familia If you yu. go to a place and there is no peace then you will be made a peace in that family Ukifika mahali pana ugomvi basi wewe utawapatanisha If you go to a place where there is disputes then you are going to bring peace Maana hilo ndilo kusudi la Bwana Because that is the will of God Hatujaja mahali hapa tujenge tu manyumba na tuweze coming to this place so that we can just prosper and build houses Bibili and live a, a flamboyant tuta, life. Kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake. Bible says that we should seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Na yale yote tunayohitaji yatakuja. And the rest shall be added unto us. Yatatufata. They will just follow us. Yatatufata. They will follow us. Yatatufata. They will follow us. Kwa hiyo tusilale usingizi. So let us not slumber. Tuwe macho maana sisi. Let us be awake. Tuwe macho. Let us be awake. Tuwe macho let us be away maana sisi ni tofauti for we are different na kile dunia ilicho with what the world is haleluya amen hebu tuendelee na kusoma neno la mungu let us continue reading the word of god tusome waamzi let us go to the book of judges waamzi sura ya 16 we are going to read from the book of judges 16 from verse 1 to 20 judges 16 going to read from verse 1 to 20 you can follow through in your bible with your bible then went samson to gaza and saw there an harlot and went into her and it was told the gazites saying samson is come hither and they compassed him in and in and laid 
await for him all night in the gate of the city, and were, and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. Verse 3, And Samson lay till until midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the gates of the the, and took the doors of the gate of the city and two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up and to, uh, to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the Lord of the Philistines came and up to unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If thy bind me with seven green weeds that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the laws of the Philistines brought up to her green, seven green weeds, which had, no, had not been dried. And she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brought the, he brought the wheels as a thread of tow is broken when it, touched the fire, it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me first with new robes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new robes and bound him with therewith and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and there were lies in waiting, abiding in the chamber, and he broke them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and, hold, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou wavest the seven locks of my head with web, with the web, and she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon this Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and went away with the pin and the, and the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, how, has, how canst thou say, I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There had not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall come weak and be like any other man. Verse 18, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the laws of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath shewed me all his heart. Then the laws of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hands. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off all the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke, awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was, had departed from him. I think we have all followed... Uh, via our Bibles, 
because we all have bibles tunaona ya kwamba samson we see that samson ni mtumishi wa mungu aliyekuwa na nguvu sana he was a servant of god who was very powerful alikuwa na nguvu sana he was very powerful na alikuwa mnaziri wa Mungu. Yaani ameteuliwa na Mungu, amechaguliwa na Mungu. And he was who was set apart by God. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tunaona kwamba kama vile nilikuwa nasema kwamba jambo linalo linalo tuponza tu ni ile kutaka kujifananisha au kuwa kama watu wengine. So I said something that leads us to fall is that we want to be like others. Kwa hiyo adui akawa anamuona Samson katika zile nguvu alizonazo. So the enemy saw that how Samson was strong na adui akawa na hasira sana kwa ajili yake. And he was very wroth against him. Akawa na hasira sana. He was very angry against him. Kwa hiyo akawa anamtafuta lini atampata. See, so he was seeking how will he get hold of him. Na kama kweli tumeitwa na Bwana. And if it is true that you have been called by the Lord, na Mungu ametupa karama zake zote. And God has already paid all that price. Hamuna jambo lingine linaweza likafanya kwamba adui awe na nguvu juu yetu. There is nothing that can make the enemy to have power over us. Asipokuwa dhambi except sin zambi only sin ni kitu kikubwa sana nataka niongelee siku ya leo i want to talk about this very big thing najua kwamba labda wengine hampendi tuongelee zambi i know some of us would not want to talk about sin lakini ni vizuri kuongelea zambi but it is good to talk about sin maana zambi inatafuta kutoa mtu kwenye nafasi mungu aliyo because sin seeks to remove us from our position na ilivyotokea kwa samson ndivyo hivyo hivyo siku hadi siku adui anatafuta ni namna gani atakutoa kwenye nafasi yake and just like the way it happened to samson it's the same way that the devil seeks every day how he can remove you from your position samson akiwa amejana nguvu you know samson had strength akiwa amejana nguvu za Mungu. while he was full of power and strength akaanza kutembea he started walking around akaanza kutembea kiangalia he was walking around katika nguvu nyingi while he was very strong akijua kwamba mimi na nguvu za Mungu and he knew that he had the akijua power of god kwamba mimi na neno la Mungu he knew that he has the word of akijua god akijua kwamba ninacho ninachotaka kuwa nacho and he knew that i have all that it takes me to have akaendelea katembea katika ufalme huo and he huo. was walking in that kingdom alipokuwa anatembea and as he was walking akaingia kwenye nyumba ya kahaba he went into a house of a harlot akaingia kwenye hiyo nyumba he went into a house of a harlot adui alipokuwa anatembea adui na alikuwa anatembea na anamwangalia samson was walking the enemy was also walking alongside yani kabla haujanguka kwenye zambi even before you fall into sin ukiwa tu katika mawazo while it is just something you are thinking of shetani anaanza kucheka na kufurahi the devil is already laughing and happy anatembea na wewe akiangalia he is just walking with you just kila watching siku, kila siku every day watching biblia inasema the bible says shetani ni kama simba ngurumai that the devil is like a roaring lion ni kama simba ngurumai he is like a roaring lion ni kama simba ngurumai like a lo- roaring lion anatafuta ni nani atakaye mmeza he is seeking who he can devour ana hasira sana because he is very angry anakufanya usiwe tofauti na wengine he makes you not to be different from Una- Fanana kama mataifa mengine. You are just looking like the people mataifa of the nations. Mataifa sio mjua Mungu. People who do not know God. Katika mawazo, even in your mind you are thinking. Unakuwa na mawazo yasiyo mpendeza Mungu. You think things that are not good. Katika kunena kwako, even while you speak, unanena mambo yasiyo mpendeza Mungu. You speak out things that do not please the Lord. Yale yote unayoyafanya. Whatever you are doing. Kwa kuwaza wala kutenda. In thinking or in doing. Lazima tuangalie kama yanaendana na mpango wa Mungu. We must watch that are they really going according to kwa the word of God wala kwa kuwaza even while we even while just three, just in thinking wapendwa hata kwa kuwaza tunatenda zambi even just the way we think the things we think about kuna mtumishi wa Mungu alikuja mahali hapa kutoka Uganda there is a man of God who came into this place from Uganda akasema kuna mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa ni kiongozi wao kanisani and he said that there was a man of God who was the leader in their church siku moja Mungu akamwambia tubu And one day God told him repent. Una zambi ya uzizi because you've been having a sin of fornication. Hey, akashanga. 
and he was amazed. Mbona mimi sijawahi kufanya vitu kama hivi? He said me I have never seen. Ina inatokeaje? Now how come you are telling me to repent? Mungu akamwambia wale And God told him. Unapoona mwanamke anapanda hapo madhabahu na mwangalia. When you see women going up onto the altar the way you look at them yeah. lustfully. Katika mawazo tayari. Even in your mind you have already sinned. Huyo mtumishi wa Mungu akawa na muda mgumu sana wa kutubu na kuomba Mungu. He had msama. such a difficult time to repent and ask the Lord to forgive him. Kwa tunaweza tukajitia moyo tukasema hapana sijazini sijaiba. Sometimes you can say no 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 no. Lakini mawazo yako ndani ya mawazo yako. I have not told I have not fornicated but ndani ya mawazo kuna tamaa. But in your mind you are full of lust. Ndani ya mawazo yako. In your mind. Yaani kuna kuna vitu havionekani. There are some things that are not seen. Na na naweza kujua kama una 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 asira. Who knows that you are such an angry person? Unaweza kuwa una ficha haionekani. It could be that you are hiding it and people do Lakin not know Mungu it. Lakini Mungu anaona. But God can see it. Unaweza kuwa una wivu. It could be that you are a jealous person. Hizo ni zambi labda haziweke wazi zikaonekana. It's not seen physically Viko but it's ndani it yako. Because it is in you. Lakini zinakula. But they zinakula ile nguvu ya Mungu ndani yako zinakula nguvu ya Mungu zinakula nguvu ya Mungu zinakula nguvu ya Mungu mpaka unashangaa baadaye inazaa chuki and at the end of the day you just feel that you, ha- you are full of hatred unashangaa mtu namchukia bure tu you just hate people just like that ukiona mtu anapita una yani unamuona kama yani unamchukia tu You just hate people even if they just walk around or pass by you just hate them. Una yani unataka hata kumwangalia mara. You do not even want to look at them twice. Haja kosa. They have not done nothing Hada wrong. Haja fanya chochote. They did not do anything. Kazi ya shetani. That is the work of the devil. Ni ibilisi. That is the work of the devil. Aliye mwongo na mbaya tangu zamani. It is the devil that has been a liar since Aliye then. Aliye mudanganya Adam na Eve mpaka kawatoa kwenye nafasi the yao. The one who lied to Adam and even removed them from their position. Akawatoa nguo, akawavua nguo za utukufu. And he made them to be non-glorious. Akawavua nguvu za kif- nguo za kifalme. And he removed from them every power that kingdom power that they were having. Tunaona kwamba Samu, eh, Samson. We see that even Samson akaingia kwenye nyumba ya ya, ya, ya nani ya, ya went into the house of this hall mara ya kwanza first time mara ya kwanza first time wakamuona anaingia kwenye nyumba they ya they saw ya, him ya going into that house of the hall wakilisi wakasema ah tumekupata and the philistines said oh we got the guy itakapofika usiku tutamuingilia when it is at night we just go in and Alaku find tutamuua. him and kill him ilipofika usiku when it was at kabla night kabla hawajafika before even they were there basi akaamka Samson woke up. Akaondoka. And he left. Biblia inasema akanyanyua hata na, na milango ya, ya, ya The mama. Bible says that he even took the doors of the gate plus the bars. Akaenda nazo. And he went with them. Maana alikuwa ni mtu mwenye nguvu. Because he was a person who was strong. Akapona siku hiyo. And that day somehow he they did not catch him. Wakati mwingine unaona kama Mungu amekuachia tu. Sometimes you feel like I'm Mana just, ni Mungu wa rehema. I've just gone away from him because he's a, mercy, he's a God of mercy, he's a God of compassion. Ni kwa huruma zake. It is just by his compassion. Ni kwa huruma zake tu. It is just by his mercy. Lakini tusiwe rafiki azamu. But we should not be friendly to sin. Tusiwe rafiki azamu wapenzi. Let us not be friend sin. Tukemee zambi katika maeneo yote. Let us rebuke sin in every area of our life. katika singisi katika ndoto even in, while we are asleep the things we dream mungu, if you dream a dream that is against god's word wake up and come against it bind it kemea come against Fukuzi it ambali. and send it away isije kutokea katika damu na nyama so that it no, may not happen to you physically basi samson akaendelea so samson continues siku nyingine akaingia tena kwa nyumba akahaba another day as usual he goes in again into na the hallow's house na huyo alikuwa ndio mwisho wake and this one now was his end akaingia kwenye nyumba ya delila he went to the house of delila akamwona ni msichana mzuri and saw that delila was a very beautiful Aka girl akamwona kwamba ni mtu mzuri ni mke mzuri and he thought that he was she was a good wife asijue ya kwamba not knowing that ndio mwisho wake that was his end tusiweze kucheza na zambi let us not play around with sin tunaona kwamba mtumishi wa Mungu we see that this servant of God alikuwa anaweza kusema uongo he could even cheat 
akamwambia uongo leo he cheated her once kwamba ukinifunga na kamba that if you tie me with ropes basi ukiita wa, 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 wa filisti and you call the philistines nitakuwa sina nguvu then i will just be an, like an ordinary man badirisha, he kept uongo. changing the lies that he was telling delilah lakini ukiendelea kukua familia na uongo but if you continue and become familiar with lies ukiendelea kuwa familia na zambi if you continue kuzoea sin utakuja kujikuta you will find that kwamba adui amekukamata that the devil is, is going to get hold of you biblia inasema tuwe macho the bible says we should be awake tuwe macho we should be awake tuwe makini we should be careful kwamba adui shetani that the devil the enemy ni kama simba ngurumae he is like a roar anachunguza lion. kila mahali every time he is just seeking anachunguza he is searching nitampataje how will i get this person how can i get hold of this person akikuta na mawazo mabaya and if he finds that you have akikuta na mawazo ya chuki and even being hateful atakukamata he is going to get hold of you na kitu atakachokifanya and what is going to do basi nikukuua it is just to kill you ni kwa huzuni sana it is grave it's grievous samson alipo alipofikiria kwamba bado ana nguvu that when samson thought that he is still very strong kumbe adui ameshajua siri yake oh the devil had already known his secrets akawa sasa wamemkata wame, wame nywele they, they, they shaved his hair the locks wameumvua nguo and they removed his clothes yani ile nguvu ya ufalme wameiondoa and that kingdom power that was upon him Utawala was already gone hana tena he did not have the strength anymore wale wenye alikuwa anawatesa sasa wakamtesa the people that he was making suffer now started to make him suffer kuna mtu wakati flani alisema alienda mbinguni akarudi there is someone who at a time said that he went to heaven and came back yani hiyo sasa ni, ni Mungu anajua It is God who knows anyway. Kwamba ameenda mbinguni akarudi. He that he went to heaven and came back. Katika roho. In the spirit. Na alipofika huko and when he reached heaven. Alipokuwa hell kuzimu sasa. Ah, kwa he was in hell. Akakuta kwamba he found that kuna watu wameokoka lakini wameenda huko. That there are some people that are born again Alipo but they are in hell. And he used to know these people. Sasa shetani akamwambia yani hawa ndio ninatesa sana hawa. And the devil told him that if they is torturing these are the ones that I really torture. Ya kwamba hawa ndio ninawatesa sana. These ones are the ones that really suffer here. Maana walikuwa wananitesa na wao. Because they were also torturing me while they were in the world. Kwa, kwa hiyo so tujue kwamba adui ana hasira sana kwa ajili yetu. We should know that the devil is very angry concerning us. Na wakati wa kupona ni sasa. And the time for us to be healed is now wakati wa kupona ni sasa for the time for us to be healed is wakati now wakati wa kupona kanisa ni sasa for the time the, the time for the church to be healed is now tumkimbie adui na hata tukimbia let us run away from the devil and he is also going to go away hallelujah amen hallelujah amen tutafanyaje ili tuweze kupona How, what are we going to do so that we may be healed tutafanyaje ili tuweze kupona what should we do that we may be healed. kama adui yetu ana hasira sana because the devil as our enemy he is very angry tusome katika yohana sura ile ya 3 let us read from the book of john chapter 3 the book of john chapter 3 yohana 3 john chapter 3 verse 1 starting from verse 1 John chapter 3 starting from verse 1 The Bible says Okay we will follow with our Bibles There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews basi palikuwa na mtu mmoja mfarisayo jina lake ni Kodemo mkuu wa Wayahudi the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi you know that thou art a teacher come from that comes from god for no man can do this miracles that thou doest except god be with him huyu alimjia usiku akamwambia rabbi twajua kuwa huu mwalimu umetoka kwa Mungu 
kwa maana hakuna mtu awezae kuzifanya ishara hizi uzifanyazo wewe isipokuwa Mungu yu pamoja naye Jesus answered and said unto him Verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Yesu akamjibu akamwambia Amini amini na kuambia mtu asipozaliwa mara ya pili hawezi kuona ufame wa Mungu Niko Demas said unto him How can I how can a man be born when he is old can he enter in the, the second time into his mother's womb and be born Nikodemu akamwambia awezaje mtu kuzaliwa akiwa mzee aweza kuingia tumboni mwa mama mamae mara ya pili akazaliwa Jesus answered very verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god okay Yesu akamwambia amini amini na kuambia mtu asipozaliwa kwa maji na kwa roho hawezi kuingia ufame wa Mungu mstari wa sita. that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit kilichozaliwa kwa mwili ni mwili na kilichozaliwa kwa roho ni roho Bwana asifiwe sana praise the lord Tunaona mahali hapa kwamba nimesema tutaponaje tutapataje kupona Like I said that how can we be saved Maana tuko katika we dunia hii because we are in this world Mahali adui shetani na yeye yupo Where the devil is also dwelling Maana hajafungwa because he's not yet bound Bado ana uhuru wa kufanya kazi yake He's yaki. still free to do his work Na yeye ni kazi yake And this is his work anyway Tunaona Nicodemus We see that Nicodemus aliweza kukimbilia Yesu He ran unto Jesus. Alimkimbilia Yesu. He ran unto Jesus. Wakati wengine wamelala usiku, while others were asleep, yeye akakimbilia Yesu. He ran unto Jesus. Akaenda kwa Yesu usiku. He went to Jesus at night. Akasema Bwana, and he asked him, Lord, niambie maneno haya. Tell me this thing. Mambo ya wokovu alikuwa haelewi. He could not understand things concerning salvation. Akaenda kumuuliza Yesu. And he went to ask Jesus. Kwa unaweza nikasema kwamba, and so I said that Alienda kusemezana na neno. It is like he went to speak to the word. Alianza kusemezana na neno. He went to speak to the word. Wakati Samson yeye aliendelea kusemezana na na, na kahaba na kuendelea kuingia kwenye nyumba on ya kahaba. Other, on the other hand, Samson was busy speaking to the harlots and going into the houses of the harlots, while on the, this other end, Nicodemus went to speak to the word. Yeye akaenda kukimbilia neno. He ran to the word. Akaanza kusemezana na neno. He started speaking to the word. Naamini katika roho anasema nitawezaje kupona. It is like he was asking himself how can I be saved? Huyu nitawezaje kumpata? How can I get this person? Akamwambia unavyofanya. And he told him whatever you are doing. Unawayafanya. The miracles you are doing. Naonekana huko Mungu yuko pamoja na wewe. It seems that God is with you. Nataka nijue zaidi. I want to know more. Nifundishe. Can you teach me? Nifundishe. Teach me. Hebu tumwendee Yesu maana anatafuta watu wanaomtafuta. Let us go to Jesus just like Nicodemus. He is seeking people who seek him. Na tunaona kwamba Nicodemus alikuwa ni nani? Alikuwa ni Mfarisayo. And if we 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 read through the word, we realize that Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Waliokuwa na mpinga Kristo. People that were against Christ. Matendo yao ilikuwa hayaendane na neno wanalosema. Their actions were not according to the word of God and Lakini whatever they were saying. Alipona. But his, he was for salvation. Kitu ya kwanza, the first thing, mtoba. Repentance. Toba repentance toba inaleta uponyaji repentance will bring forth healing uponyaji wa kiroho na wa kimwili both physical and spiritual healing ya pili ni kujiweka wazi and the second thing just be open kujiweka wazi mbele ya Mungu just be open before the lord nimesema kwanza kama Mungu ni mzazi i said in the beginning that god is our parent ukijitasmini na kujiangalia ndani yako when you search self na kuangalia kwamba labda kuna jambo linaleta majuto mbele za Mungu. And there is something that is sinful before God. Jimi mimi mbele za Mungu. Just go before the Lord wakati and pour your heart. Wanala, wakati wengine wanalala. Why others are asleep? Chukua neno. 
get the words. Start reading the words. Start meditating upon the words. And we shall receive healing through the words. We shall receive healing through the words. We see that he started meditating upon the word of Jesus. He started meditating upon that word. He started processing that word. Speaking things of the spirit. Removing it from the physical to the spirit. And Nicodemus never remained the same. He was totally transformed. He was totally transformed contrary to the Pharisees. He continued growing spiritually. When you, go, when you are open before God and tell him about what you are going through, it's where the areas that you are facing challenges and tell him that he you need his help for sure help comes from above for sure help comes from above help comes from above help comes from above because he is our help he is our strength if you think that you are able you will be defeated you will fail but when you run unto him and ask him in a humble spirit. He is very faithful. And he is a righteous God. He is going to save you against every wrath from the devil. He can save us with everything that the devil is strategizing. He is going to save us because that is his plan so that he may save you and I so that we may speak out the mercies of the Lord so that we can make the kingdom of God so that we can make the kingdom of God to continue. The Bible says that that Jesus Jesus sat with the apostles, the 12 apostles, and he brought the kingdom into them. And they went. They went different areas. Speaking of the kingdom of God, they started in Jerusalem. They went to Samaria. They went to Judea. They went everywhere. And they reached everywhere while announcing the kingdom of God. And everywhere they there went, there were signs and miracles. If you stand, the Lord will stand with you. God will walk with you. And he will show you great and mighty works. He will show you great and mighty works. He is going to work with you. And the world will see that the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, he is in you. He is in you. He is in you. He is in you. The child so that we may show forth Utukufu wa Mungu. the glory of Utukufu God. Wa Mungu the glory Dani of God is seen in the church, even in this city, even in this nation. Utukufu wa Mungu may the glory of Mimi God be seen. May we Mimi stand. May we run and show the greatness of God. Because the God that called us, He is a great God. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. As we finish, we are going to read from the book of Isaiah. Verse 60, chapter 60, verse 1. Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1. That is our scripture. I am going to read this. Isaiah 60, verse 1. The Bible says, Arise, shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Ondoka uangaze, kwa kuwa nuru yako imekuja, na utukufu wa buwana can we applause the Lord Jesus? Applause the Lord Jesus. It is 
Nani wakati wako? It is your time and it's the time of the Lord. We are being encouraged once again and being ya strengthened. That we should arise. We should arise from our weaknesses. We should arise from weaknesses. Tuinuke. Let us arise. Tuinuke. Let us arise. It could be that you have given up. Na imekufanya kwamba and it has made uweze kuanguka kwenye usingisi that you have been asleep wewe bila kujijua unknowingly maana usipojali mambo ya ufalme wa Mungu because when you don't consider the things of the kingdom bila wewe kujua umelala Without knowing you will find yourself asleep. Usipojali mambo ya ufalme wa Mungu. If you don't consider the things of the kingdom of God. Ya Mungu. If you do not consider the work of God. Umelala. Then you are asleep. Unaweza kuwa mahali hapa. You could be in this place. Tumehubiriwa sana. We've been really preaching. Tuweze kutoa fungo la 10. That we should be giving Tutoe our tithes. Tutoe sadaka za kila we aina. We should be giving our different offerings. Lakini unajikuta ya kwamba yani umeshatahabu hata. But it's like we just forget. Hiyo ni usingizi tayari. That means you're already asleep. Kazi ya Mungu na sisi endelee. And now it, it, it's like blocking the work of God to continue. Ni mambo mengi natufanya tulale. There are so many things that can lead to our slumber. Kuwa katika yani kutojitambua. If when we do not really recognize self, kujua kwamba sisi ni wana wa kifalme, knowing that we are children of the kingdom, tuna neno that we have a word tuna neno la mfalme that we have a word of the king tuna neno wapendwa that we have a word neno liko brethren. mahali hapa katika kanisa hili we have a word that is in this church lakini tunasikia kisha muda tumeshasahau but we here today and tomorrow it's gone maana tuna tusipo tusipotenda neno because when we don't apply the word tusipoishi neno if we don't live the word tunakuwa tayari kwenye usingizi then we are asleep tunatiwa moyo tena We are being encouraged Kwamba once again amka. that wake up amka arise nuru yako imekuzukia because the glory of the lord is nuru upon you the glory of god is kupitia neno hili ni nuru through this word this is light this is light this is a amazing katika yale yote can we all arise in Yali every area area that has been oppressing Tutoke us giza. that we go out of darkness utukufu wa Mungu uonekane so that the glory of god utukufu may be seen so that the glory of god may be seen utukufu wa Mungu uonekane so that the glory of god Kazi may be seen utukufu wa Mungu uonekane in your job let the glory of the lord be seen wewe through you kwenye biashara utukufu wa Mungu uonekane in your business let Mana people see the glory of God na wafanya biashara wengine because you will be different from other businessmen mahali upo where you are nuru ya bwana ionekane let the light of the lord shine nuru ya bwana iangaze let the light of the lord shine bwana aliyekuita the lord that called you yeye ni mwaminifu he is faithful yesu aliyekuita jesus who called you yeye ni mwaminifu he is very faithful na yeye atatenda and he is going to do it atakulinda he is going to protect Ata you He is going to keep you. Atakutunza. He is going to keep Ata you. Atakulinda. He is going to protect you. Hadi Yesu atakaporudi. Until when Jesus will come Ahadi back. Hadi Yesu atakaporudi. Until when Jesus will Akukute come back. Akukute uko hai. So that when he comes back you will Akute find you alive. Akute uko kiroho. You will find you spiritual. Unamngojea. That you will be you will be waiting for him. Bwana sifiwe sana. Amen. Bwana sifiwe sana. Amen. Hebu tusimame tuombe. Can we stand and pray? Tumwambie Bwana. And tell the Lord. Tutie nguvu tena. Strengthen us once again. Tutie nguvu tena. Strengthen us once again. Tutie nguvu tena. Strengthen us once again. Tuinue mikono yetu juu. Can we raise our hands? Tumwambie tutie nguvu tena. And ask him to strengthen us once again. Bwana. Yes. Tutie nguvu ya kusemezana na wewe. Yes, Lord. Tusisemezane na adui tusemezane na wewe. Tutie nguvu ya kutafakari neno. Tutie nguvu ya kuomba bila kuchoka. Tutie nguvu ya kuomba bila kuchoka. Haleluya tuombe. Mungu wetu na baba yetu. Wewe uliye juu sana. Wewe uliye mwaminifu. Wewe uliye muweza baba. Tazama tunakuja mbele zako e Bwana. Hakika Mungu aliyetuita wewe ni mwaminifu. Umesema tukuite Bwana wa mabwana. Tunalitia jina lako e Bwana wa mabwana kwamba wewe aliyetuita. 
wewe ni mwaminifu e baba wewe utatenda mambo ya ajabu mambo makuu mno zaidi ya vile tunavyowaza zaidi ya vile tunavyoomba tunahitaji nguvu zako tena tushushie nguvu zako za ajabu tutie nguvu bwana ya kushinda e baba tushinde adui shetani tushinde majaribu tushinde e bwana kila kinachosimama mbele yetu kwa ajili ya kututoa utukufu wako kwa ajili ya kutunyonya nguvu zako baba tazama bwana tunakuhitaji na nguvu zako tunakuhitaji na nguvu zako e bwana oh mungu wetu na mwokozi nani kama wewe mungu siyeshindwa wewe uliyekuepo baba upo na utakuwepo bwana milele na milele wewe ni mungu umetuita e baba ili tuweze kuwa mawakala wako chini ya jua hii baba oh yesu ni wewe tu bwana ama bwana ni wewe mfano wa mfalme oh yawe tunahitaji nguvu zako tunahitaji uweza wako tunakuhitaji e bwana tunakuhitaji mtakatifu tunakuhitaji yawe nani kama wewe bwana nani kama wewe mfano wa mfalme tunanyenyekea mbele zako e baba tunanyenyekea mbele zako e bwana <laughs>